here on Kiwi. Let's talk architecture. Um, the um, the Unitech uh, Institute of uh, Technology has a um, an uh, architecture course, and uh, you may have seen this featured on uh, the advertising campaign for Unitech. It's quite an innovative advertising campaign where they have a documentary style presentation of um, of what's been going on there with the students and the interaction with the lecturers as well. And um, I've got some stars from the uh, campaign joining me in the Kiwi studio. Mark Mishmash, who is a um, lecturer in architect, architecture, joining me in the Kiwi studio. Good morning to you. Morning. And um, uh, a student, Alex Riley, who features in the um, in the ads as well. Hello to you, Alex. Hello. Nice to have you in. Now, uh, Mark, you were um, a, a practicing architect uh, for many years over in America before you came here. Yeah, yeah, I have my own company in the United States. I had my own company before I came over here. Uh, and uh, well, Why did you come over? Uh, my wife and I came over for a vacation about two years ago, and whenever we travel, we try to go to schools and museums, and we kind of went to all the schools on the North Island, the, bi- the big, bigger ones. We went to Unitech, yeah. University of Auckland, and Vic while we were here, and uh, also met some of the architects who I was familiar with their work from the United States. And so you came to guest lecture for a wee while. Yeah, yeah. So we met we met a couple of the people from different universities. Tony Van Rant, which is the head of the Department of Architecture at Unitech. And uh, after we got back in the States, he sent me an email and asked me if I would be willing to come over and teach a six-week course on uh, sustainable building practice. Is that your specialty? Our firm in the United States, that's all my firm in the United States does. We actually... I, I think of it more as high performance buildings and buildings that perform uh very well uh typically are very sustainable buildings huh. okay um and then you decided to to stay on after all yeah, so I got here and about halfway through my six week course, I was asked if I could uh stay and take another full semester load worth of work. They had somebody that was sick and wasn't going to come back from teaching, and I uh said I'd do it if they'd fly my mm. family over, which they uh, did and, and I haven't been back to the states actually since and, I came over. And, and in that time frame, yeah, we had um, these mega disasters in New yeah. Zealand with the earthquake in, in yeah. Christchurch, and uh, the whole question of how we should rebuild and um, architecture in general in New Zealand is now really coming to the fore, isn't it? Yeah, that's actually a big part of why I stayed over here. Uh, the there were a couple of things that were really kind of surprising for me to come over and see the industry. Uh, it's a, a little bit. Uh, different than what I expected. In the United States, believe it or not, a lot of the New Zealand architects are known in in the U.S. I've taught in the U.S. as well, and if I were to walk into the school where I used to teach, University of Arizona, and ask one of my studios, name me five architects from New Zealand, most of the students could just spit it off the top of their head. And so I came over here and was really hoping to see a lot of great architecture, which I did see, but I was also really surprised to find out all these other issues with leaky building and a, kind yeah. of a lot of the other construction issues that, that are in the kind of forefront right Which now. is an issue, I suppose, that um, you, Alex, have sort of grown up with as, as, a, as a kid, knowing the, about this whole leaky building business and probably hearing about that in the news quite, quite a bit. Yeah. <laughs> um, it, what, what's inspired you to get into the field of architecture? Um, I guess um, the way in which I've grown up... Um, I, I've always been good at sort of design and I always knew from a young age that I wanted to go into that field of the, the creative field. Yeah. Um, You've always been artistic? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> the reason I chose architecture was because it sort of involved a bit of everything. It involves science, um, mm. it involves maths, it involves art and I thought that that's quite cool and that's something that I'd be that I would really like to do. I've, I've always felt that architecture, you know, uh, I mean, it's, an, it's an artistic endeavour, but there's not a lot of freedom within that. You know, like suddenly, like when you're doing architecture, you're doing straight lines, you know, the, the, there's there's certain rules that have to be obeyed, you know, in order for a building to, to stand up. So you can't really be so freeform. Am I right or wrong in that? Yes and no. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be interested to see what the student thinks. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think, the the initial concept, the initial ideas, the way that you f- that the way that you first sort of start um, start your ideas, yeah. that's quite free. Um, I think um, in terms of constraints, um, things like um, like when you get to a site, like the constraints at a site, like how big a site is, and I think also mm. um, 
how much money a client is willing to spend on a house, yeah. that, that <laughs> sort of thing. Yeah. Um, but no, I, I think that it is quite quite ambiguous. Um, yeah. Isn't the client the, the most annoying thing? That it's the thing that it always gets in the way of uh, creating a great building? One of the things that we've really struggled with in the United States is it's different being from a student like Alex uh, to practicing architect like myself and then actually teaching because they're kind of all different hats mm. that I think you wear. But but from a point of practice, we try not to pick projects. We don't go after projects. It's been a, a thing we, we've decided in our firm in the United States. We actually try to pick clients. And if we get the right clients, then the projects will be good good projects. And so I think the thing that we tr look for really is we look for people that believe in good design and we look for people that are willing to take a little bit of risk. And and if you get those two things, you can actually turn out pretty good projects. I think the thing that really limits architecture uh, is, is creativity. I mm. think that there's a lot of ways to solve problems and that's the thing that architecture school I think is really good at is educating people how to be creative problem solvers, how mm. to come at a problem from a different angle. Talking about solving problems, one bi big problem for New Zealand houses is um, is keeping them warm um, during the winter and, and cool in the in the summer. Um, were you surprised to see the type of buildings that have been built here over I've years? I've been very su surprised. That, that, Like I said, from a design standpoint, I think New Zealand probably is actually one of the world leaders in design. I, I've been really, really impressed with but what about going, going back but, to our bungalow and village? Yeah, days? but the, when when you actually get into the mechanical systems and and even the kind of building technology of of buildings, mm. it's one of the things I kind of feel like I run up against a brick wall about here. I talk about vapor barriers and buildings that breathe and those kind of things that we hear all the time in conversation right now in architecture, and it really surprises me how many people don't understand the actual physics of moisture and water movement and and a lot of other things and it's not just architects it's builders it's people mm -hmm. in building consent it's people in education surprisingly politicians and yeah and and then we come i come from the other thing i face is that i'm i'm from america i've been here a year and a half and i although i m my background for myself is i grew up in a family of contractors i did engineering before i did architecture and mm. then i did architecture and and then I've worked in practice both in building and in architecture. So I kind of come from it from a very diverse background. My education in school is also in science and math and physics and mathematics. And so I look at it from a very kind of practical point of view. Like I said, my practice focuses on high performance buildings and that's water energy site. And we look at sustainability also from a social economic point of view. So mm -hmm. we kind of look at the building as a whole thing and and when I I've come here and I've talked to people about building envelope they say oh well that's how it is in America or that doesn't apply here this is New Zealand and, and it's mm. it, it really is a shock to me because physics are the same yeah and America's a big country we have coastal regions with almost the exact same temperature range and moisture range yeah and so there are problems that we've dealt with and in America 30 years ago went through the exact same water leakage problem. Really? I mean huge and we have tort law so right now there's huge class action lawsuits. Canada's gone through it, and it's just something that actually, when I first started with my family's construction company, that was very, very forefront of what what everything Cause was going on. Early on, the architects were blaming the builders, builders blaming the architects, and now is there a middle ground? Well, being I think found? I think part of what's happened, and I think it's what happened in America too, is is building technology changes. Mm. It it changes the way we, the traditions of building have to be assembled. So the construction is we get new building materials and those building materials can be assembled in a way that they've been done historically But they don't perform the way that buildings performed historically, right? And so as we switch to things like OSB oriented strand board sheathing or plywood sheathing suddenly Moisture doesn't move through the wall the same way as it did when it was just two pieces of wood uh. Tightly close together. Yeah, right, and so we have to change the way we think about moisture movement and air movement and those kind of Things and also we we now have mechanical systems that they didn't have, and we can dehumidify air and we can do other things. And so, we, we I think New Zealand's kind of stuck in the tradition of building, yeah. And they haven't really looked at the technology of building. So Alex, what what um yeah what because I guess when when architects are first starting out, there's a there's a sort of uh, print that they want to put on 
a, a building or a project, a, 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 a personal touch, I suppose. Is there an angle for you personally? Have you found what you want to do specifically with architecture? No. Not yet? <laughs> no. So you're in that in that discovery phase. Yeah. Um, I think... I think that for me personally, you know, I sort of want to to try a whole lot of different different things um, because architecture can be anything. It can be building houses to furniture mm. design to set design. Um, so yeah, that's right. I mean, we've been focusing yeah. on buildings here, but yeah. as you say, <laughs> it's right across the board, yeah. isn't it? Um, so I think I'm just going to wait and mm. see. Our our see company in the U.S. <laughs> does product design. We we're we yeah. actually too. We think of ourselves as designers. And it just so happens that we're qualified to do buildings as well as other things. We've we've done logo designs for people and huh. all sorts of <laughs> okay. product design right, cool. and everything. So. It, so it blends into graphic and, design. Yeah, and for, for me, design everything's designed. Cup, cups are designed, <laughs> pencils are designed, and so a lot of mm. it comes down to me about good design and poor design. And it's one of the things that I've tried to focus on a little bit at Unitech is I don't believe in teaching people. When I was in school the first school I went to for architecture, they wanted us to learn styles of architecture, mm. modern style or European style or different things l like that. And I, I don't believe in that. I think that architecture or design in general, like I said, it's a way of approaching a problem and trying to come up with a creative solution. Mm. And so it's a th it, for me, is a process that that's evolves constantly and it's always in flux and it's a, always an education. I actually learn a lot from students. So and, so in saying that, getting back to Christchurch, there was yeah. some concern about what the style of the rebuild yeah. will be. You know, like with Napier, with the Napier earthquake, it was the Art, Art Deco style. Yeah. So what you're saying is it won't be a particular style, perhaps. It's a problem that needs fixing. Yeah, I think styles actually, for me, they're really indicative of a certain period of time. Yeah. Like they're, they're, they, they mark a period of hi in history, and it was kind of what was available to the people at the time. It's the reason they built buildings out of stone is because they had tools to cut stone and they understood how to stack stone and bond stone together. You know, mm. it wasn't until we learned how to, you know, mine for iron ore and smelt iron ore and work metal that we ended up being able to build with steel and and so it it, it there, there's kind of a whole bunch of things that have to be in place to learn how to build buildings. We couldn't build high-rise buildings until somebody invented elevators. Yeah. And as soon as we get huh. steel, lightweight cladding and, ele and, and elevators, all of a sudden now we can build really tall buildings. And so I think, I think to be trapped in a style is, is really not a good model to look at for a future project. I think there's actually, it, it almost sounds bad to say, but I think there's a real opportunity in Christchurch to be an example to the rest of the world to say, if we have to rebuild the city, let's rebuild the city to be the most economical, sustainable, mm. social, political, sustainable city in the world, and let's let's show the world what can be done. And that means kind of necessarily we don't want to base it on some historic style yeah. that's already taken place. Yeah, and or any kind of uniform sort yeah. of style of the current time. Um, Alex, so so I understand that your first year hasn't been the easiest year, but. Um, you're going to play, keep keep at it, and um, and you know, looking forward to the next year as well. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, yeah. This year has been quite hard, um, a bit of a shock, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to keep at it. Hopefully, get there in the end. And where do you want to end up? Um, at the moment, um, at the beginning of the year, you know, I had all these different ideas. Mm. Um, I had you know set goals. But over the last year, you know, they've sort of changed. And I think, for me, my main goal at the moment is just to finish my degree. Mm. Um, and then once I finish my degree, sort of um, take it from there. Um, if I do end up going into um, the field of sort of architecture and, and housing design, I would like to own my own firm one day. Yep. Um, I know that's going to take a little while. Um, yeah. <laughs> but it's definitely a great goal to have, yeah. Well, um, <clears throat> of course, I guess I guess the um, intake is starting to, um, you know, th that's that's happening soon, I suppose, for Unitech. They'll be yeah, accepting new students. We're, they've, you know, we've been getting quite a few applications. I think the numbers are actually up. I think the ad campaigns helped. I think one of the things that's good is it's not just kind of the architecture school that's running ads. It's 
photography's running ads yeah. and nursing's running ads. And I think across the board, it's really given, put Unitech on the front of people's minds as the new year kind of approaches for students. So I'd say across the board, the ad campaigns worked. I know architecture uh, has quite a few students right now. I'm involved in student interviews. So people that apply to the architecture program there, everybody gets an interview and they kind of meet with me or one of the other staff members and, and we speak with them before they get into the program. And we've had a lot of uh, pretty good people applying this year. And I'd imagine the students appreciate um, the lecturers having real world, real, you know, real world experience in the field that's being taught. Yeah, as well. I, think, I think that that's one of the things that architecture school at Unitech does very well is for me, I've, I've told the students and, and I tell the students I've taught in the United States as well that everybody has to define architecture for themselves. Yeah. One of the things for me that is about architecture is that it's built. It's different than a lot of other things in that to me if it's just a pretty architectural drawing, it still has a lot of meaning and it can still be very important, but it somehow falls short of architecture unless it's mm. built. And I think that's one of the things that Unitech does very well is they kind of get out there and they make architecture. They build uh, at least one building every year, the students do, and we get students involved in architecture firms where they get to work on real projects that end up being built. Well, it's a great um, topic to talk about, and it's something that affects our lives on a daily basis, and as well, Alain de Bouton says, it affects our happiness yes, it does. as well. Um, Mark Mishmash has been my guest. He's a lecturer in architecture at um, Unitech, and also Alex Riley, who's a student, first-year student, finishing up, um, I suppose, pretty soon. Looking forward to Christmas holidays? Yes, definitely. Yeah, excellent. <laughs> thank, you, thank you both for uh, coming on in. Thank you.